Well, hey, welcome back to the studio. You know, it's kind of funny. It seems like whenever I have a project going and everything's going great, then something comes along and just ruins it. Well, I was really excited. Recently, I picked up a copy of Attack of the Pesky Robots by the 8-Bit Guy. And the reason I did is because I've never, in the entire time since 1984, I think it was, since we bought the Commodore 128. I've never had a game that ran natively on that system. So I was super excited to see that this game is available for the Commodore 128. Well, I bought it. I got the Super Nintendo controllers, and I bought the adapter to go in the user port, and my disk drive quit working. I'm hoping it's something simple, maybe just some dirty heads or something. Maybe it needs a little bit of lubrication because it's been a long time. So I figured today we'll take a little bit of time to tear apart this Commodore disk drive and see what's wrong with it. Stay tuned. Now this particular drive, this is the Commodore 1571 drive. And the cool thing with this one, when it was introduced back in 1985, was its ability to use double-sided, double-density disks and store about 360K. It could read both sides of the disk at once, and it supported the burst mode, which increased the read and write times of that drive to make it a little bit faster. You know, Commodore had a bit of a glitch with their 1541s and the VIC drives before that that caused them to be really, really slow. Now this one, just like the other one, still has its own 6502 processor inside and it still communicates basically the same way, but when you use it with a Commodore 128 system, like the one behind me, which is the one that my dad bought along with this drive back in 1985, we loved this thing. But when you combine those two, you get the faster disk access, it reads both sides without having to flip the disk over, and it's a really, really great drive. Plus, I just love the look of it. So let's go ahead and get this thing turned over. We'll get it taken apart, and hopefully it'll be something simple to get this thing going. I really want to play that new game. I really, really hope this thing is not dead. The first thing we'll do is go ahead and take off the, uh, the little handle for the disk drive and get the screws out of here. I have a lot of memories with this particular drive and it would just absolutely break my heart if it was broken or if it was something that was beyond my skill level because I am not a Commodore disk drive technician under any stretch of the imagination. But we have literally had this thing for, well, I guess 40 years now. And my dad, I've mentioned this before, I remember going to the uh, computer store with him and looking at all the different types of computers, the Tandy and the Commodore and the Apple II that was out and my dad swearing that the Commodore was going to be the one that took over the computer industry. Uh, he was obviously a little bit wrong there because uh, it ended up not being the dominant format, but it was one that was popular for years and years. I mean, we used this thing as our main computer up until, I think, 1996 or so when uh, I was in, uh, well, I was graduating high school and they uh, bought a compact that had Windows 95 on it. So <laughs> this was our computer all the way up until then. So my experience was Commodores and then Windows 95. I didn't really have anything in between. I had friends that had other models and, and stuff that we played on, but nothing that I ever really got to be good at. All right, so we've got the top off of here. Back here, we've got the power supply. Uh, this is our disk drive mechanism, and it has two heads, one here and one on the bottom. Like I say, this will actually be able to read disks on both sides. Uh, let's see. Check. No, it doesn't feel too bad as far as lubrication goes. But I think we'll need to go ahead and clean those heads. So let me get out my stuff and we'll get working on that. So for cleaning heads on these things, I always just use some alcohol and a, a swab. We're going to come in here and just clean those heads off real good. 
Now you got to be careful on these because the heads can come out of alignment over time and that is something that I have zero experience or knowledge of how to do. So the last thing I want to do is knock anything out of alignment. So I'm trying to be very, very careful as I do this not to, not to mess anything up. Go ahead and clean those off real good. It was working fine and then just, just basically quit. Gave me a, it tries to load and it just gives me an error. I mean, there's a little bit of dirt on those heads. So maybe that's it. This was in the old studio when I had the flood last year. So, you know, there was a lot of moisture in there for a bit until I was able to get everything out and get everything dried out. So hopefully it's not anything you know, related to that, because I haven't really used it since then. I think while we're in here, we'll go ahead and uh, lubricate the uh, rails just a little bit, just to make sure we have good motion in those. Make sure we don't get it on anything important. Lubricate those rails up a little bit. Yeah, that feels better. Now I know that it was actually moving the disc. I could hear the disc spinning, so I know that's all okay. And I could hear the head uh, trying to read as well. So hopefully that was the only problem. So let's go ahead and get this hooked up and see if we can make it work. All right, so I've got the Commodore 128 hooked up. I left the cover off of this in case we've got to take a look at it again. And I've got a couple of different discs here. I've got the Attack of the Pesky Robots disc, which is a Commodore 128 disc. And it's supposed to have a, I think an auto boot feature on it, which I've never used on Commodore before. So, a little head crashing going on there. It says we're ready. Let's see if there's anything uh, that it can read, maybe a directory here. File not found. So it seems like it does not want to read that disk. Let's try a Commodore 64 game and see what happens here. Put it in 64 mode. And that seems to work. Let's wait it out here to see what happens. Yeah. So Impossible Mission is loading. So I wonder if I just got a bad disc <laughs> from the 8-bit guy. Now, I know he tests each of these before they uh, before they ship out because he writes each one individually on a, on a Commodore. So I don't know if it's just a problem with the disc or something happened in shipping. I mean, the disc itself looks fine. But, uh, yeah, it looks like... Otherwise, the drive is working. So that's uh, that's interesting. If anybody knows of anything that could be causing that, be sure to leave that in the comments. Because, like I said, I'm not a disk drive expert by any means. I can I can lube up some rails and I can clean heads, but that's about it. But it seems to me, if it's working with a C64 disk, you would think it would work with 128 also. But I say, if you know better than me. You know, please leave that in the comments because I'd sure like to know. I'd love to be able to play this. Now, I do get a download of it, and I do have an SD card adapter for my Commodore, but there's just something about playing it off the actual disc that I think I'd really like to do, you know, for that nostalgia thing. And plus, like I said, it's something I've never been able to do before is play a native Commodore 128 game on a Commodore 128. So, but this is kind of giving you the idea of how long it used to take the Commodore 64 stuff to load, isn't it? <laughs> but anyway, uh, just a short video today, pretty, uh, pretty unremarkable video, I would say. But, you know, I was having what I thought was an issue with this. I figured I'd share it with you guys as well. But uh, it looks like the disk drive must be working because it is loading. Yeah, it's jumping tracks like it's supposed to. So I guess I'm going to play some Impossible Mission, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, happy vintage computing.
visitor. Stay a while. Stay forever. Well, at least I get to play this. I always love that speech synthesis too. It's so cool. Mm -hmm. 